Oh shit, he's still like this. Oh, fuck. Uh, alright. I knew this would happen. Just sit down and distract yourself. <laughs> Hey, Todd. Well, shit. I guess I should distract myself more. Oh, I got it. Rockstar has come a long way, even between the jump between GTA 5 and Red Dead 2. Modern Rockstar is not only super popular, but super refined, both in presentation and gameplay, starting with Vice City. It seems after GTA 3, Rockstar found their formula and stuck with it all the way to present day 20 years later, and it seems to have worked. People don't really talk much about the games prior to Vice City, with GTA 3 being only mentioned in passing about how influential it was. But are the early titles even worth remembering or playing again in the first place? Let's go for the joy, right? Grand Theft Auto 1 was released in 1997 for DOS, Windows, and PlayStation, with ports for the Game Boy, weirdly enough. And boy, does this feel like the first Grand Theft Auto game. The graphics are pretty okay, with 3D buildings and 2D sprites, but the sprites look really blurry when the camera is up close, which is pretty common as the camera will pan in and out depending on your speed, which is extremely disorienting. I think this was implemented to give the player more reaction time when moving fast, however this ultimately doesn't do much. Cars either turn too fast or too slow, and all of the cars have really strange handling. I can only describe it as like driving on ice but also Velcro at the same time. However, oddly enough, this doesn't apply for the bus. The bus handles completely fine, and handles like a bus would. What makes this problem worse is the tank controls. These controls somewhat make sense for the cars to give back fine control instead of 8-way running, and it's only held back by the handling of the cars. But having the player character also have tank controls is a very questionable decision. I partially understand the decision for the sake of aiming, but why not just bind aim to the mouse and have 8-way movement for the player character? Smash TV was an isometric shooter that managed to have good 8-way movement and 8-way aiming on a SNES controller. And it's not like other games didn't have support for mouse look at the time anyways. Doom, despite what most boomer shooter enthusiasts will tell you, had support for a mouse all the way back in 1993, and even referenced it in the manual as a good way of aiming. And, even if you were to use the keyboard aim, fairly generous auto-aim ensures players can aim in their first-person shooter. If you want to shoot somebody in GTA 1, you have to slowly turn your character and hope you have a good line on the person. They could have at least added auto-aim, as it's not like you're going to be particularly specific with your aim in this game, especially with generous ammo counts and potential enemies being packed together in a single file line, with every car being able to explode if you so much as sneeze on them with a couple of bullets. All of these problems only reinforces that this game is really about doing shallow missions in the three most distinct cities that have carried over through the entire GTA series. Liberty City is probably the best playing place in the game, with cop chases being much more fun and hectic in the tight-packed hallway-like streets. However, every building looks the same, and it's hard to tell you where you are without standout locations like the neighborhoods of San Andreas or the loading bays of Vice City. Missions in this game boil down to walking to a payphone, taking orders from the caller, and attempting to follow the arrow to your destination. This is a fine if repetitive mission structure and is only really saved by the chaos and weird moments that just playing this game for 15 minutes can cause. Why is my mom paging me about dinner? Despite my complaining, this game is the start of the GTA series being a pick up and play chaos simulator, and it's easy to see why the game got relatively good press for the time. All in all, it's fun and charming in the same way Atari 2600 and obscure NES games are. And remember, respect is everything. Grand Theft Auto 2 is a more refined and polished version of GTA 1. The visual improvement is the most notable change. 
The desk light setting makes everything moody and grimy, fitting in with the game-controlled city. And while the dawn lighting makes it look more flat, it stands out from the plain and repetitive scenes of GTA 1 with much more visual flair. There's more people walking around, car designs are hyper-exaggerated and unique, and there's more secluded spots away from the roads and buildings, and the buildings themselves are more recognizable, leading to much more straightforward experience in the open world. Speaking of which, the open world is much more of a world. Hitting police cars now gives you a wanted level. Muggers can randomly walk up to you or anyone else on the street and can be shot by rival gang members. Carjackings take place all the time and you can even get jacked yourself. You now have relations with the three main gangs and they can improve or decrease depending on what missions you take. Your relations also dictate if you can even do missions for that gang in the first place, effectively making it so you can miss out on job offers if you start siding with another gang. Missions are still given by telephones and are still skins at the Ritz repeat drive here, pick up man, drop off here for something mission structure, but the circumstances are much more interesting. Drive here to pick up someone from a bank heist, pick up a traitor and feed him to a trash compactor. All of this already makes for a much better technically polished experience, and they didn't stop there with controls being slightly improved. The turning speed on foot is much more tolerable than before, even though it being tied to aiming is still an issue. Cars have been massively improved over the miss or mishandling of GTA 1, with all of the cars being really fast while at the same time being able to Tokyo drift around corners, which is immensely gratifying. But really, at its core, it's just an enhanced version of GTA 1. There isn't much more to it other than minor improvements, and ultimately it loses some of its charm compared to GTA 1 because of it. This feels like the game GTA 1 should have been, however GTA 1 was one of the first shots at a style of game like this, so its problems can be slightly ignored for the time. But this game feels wasted as it's clear they could have done so much more with it, making this game feel more like a DOS game than GTA 1, despite GTA 2 never having support for DOS systems. But I think I have the sentiment due to Rockstar's track record of massive technological jumps in quality between their titles, and especially the jump between this title and its sequel. Tommy, no, you got it all wrong. Oh, oh, Anthony. He's a big boy. He knows what he said. What'd you say? You're right. Funny how. GTA 3 is when Rockstar really hit their stride, and arguably has the best missions, driving mechanics, and open world out of the entire series. It was an actual story this time around, with their silent protagonist Claude being betrayed and shot by his girlfriend during a robbery, with the game following the steps to revenge as Claude rises through the gang-filled Liberty City. It's fitting that this game takes place in a fleshed out version of the first game's first levels, as this is a complete reinvention of the past two GTA games, now taking place entirely in 3D with much updated physics, better AI, no tank controls, new cars, cutscenes, you name it. While 3D was the biggest draw for this game at the time, coming off the heels of the first two games, holy shit, does this game just feel good to play. No longer are you fiddling with the controls to turn your character to get into a parked car. Just use WASD or the analog stick with non-committal yet smooth walking animations and just press F or triangle. It's incredible at how much a standardized and a simple control scheme can immediately improve a game without most even realizing it. This extends into the car's handling as well, with every car having unique quirks that you have to work around, while still managing to have every car feel smooth and satisfying to drive, something that some later game in the Rockstar chronology really struggles with. Missions have also been heavily revamped. You now go straight to the mission giver, who tells you what to do through cutscenes. These cutscenes are also the perfect place to show off all the little details in the game. The game shows people talking outside of what you experience. Cars have suspension physics. People will crowd around accidents and disasters. People honking at you for driving like a jackass. The gang fights. It's such a dynamic experience, and something that was kind of lost in GTA 4 and 5, and wasn't really regained until Red Dead 2. Combat is definitely better, if not a little weightless and janky. Enemies react to being shot pretty lifelessly, and weapons have the same impact and feel as a knockoff nerf blaster. However, being able to actually aim the weapons is super nice, and it's not like they don't do damage. But when you have assassination missions, it gets really obvious the weapons aren't that great. Luckily, missions are pretty open, despite having extremely set in stone objectives, which is another big plus of the game, making it so you don't exclusively use weapons to solve problems for the mob. Ultimately, GTA 3 is a supernatural evolution of the first two games that came before it, and not only influenced Rockstar, but a million other game developers as well. GTA 3 is not only a super refined game, but also a massive leap for gaming in general, a la Mario 64 Ocarina of Time.
These games deserve to be remembered, not only for extremely tight and fun- Oh, fuck. Hey. You can't just, like, sneak up on people like that. That's- that's not a cool thing to do. We live together. That is incredibly irrelevant right now. Anyways, I've decided to let you do whatever you want for the better of the channel. I hate to tell you, Todd, I've been doing that this entire time. Okay. That's good to have you back.